If you want to learn everything you need to know as a nurse about fat embolism syndrome, then this is the video for you. Fat embolism syndrome is a rare and potentially life-threatening condition in which a fatty particle or globule enters the bloodstream and becomes lodged. The full mechanisms of fat embolism syndrome are not fully understood. However, what is known is that fat embolisms result in an intense inflammatory response. This intense and overactive inflammatory response causes damage to the surrounding tissue. The damage can be so severe that it can result in organ failure. Fat embolisms most commonly occur in the lungs and can result in acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as ARDS. However, a fat embolism can occur anywhere in the vascular system, such as the skin, brain, and eyes, making it a multi-organ disease. Fat embolism syndrome is most commonly caused by bone fractures, especially if involving major bones, such as the pelvis or long bones. However, fat embolism syndrome can also occur as a result of a bone marrow transplant, pancreatitis, and during liposuction or orthopedic surgery. Signs and symptoms of fat embolism syndrome are dependent on the site of embolization. Some nonspecific signs and symptoms include tachypnea, tachycardia, and fever. When the lungs are involved, fat embolism syndrome may present with varying degrees of respiratory distress and poor oxygenation. If the skin is involved, a rash that presents with round, pinpoint, non-blanchable spots called a petechial rash may be present. When the brain is involved, it may present with varying degrees of non-laterizing symptoms such as an altered mental state and level of consciousness. And if the eyes are involved, fat embolism syndrome may present with vision changes. Diagnosis of fat embolism syndrome is difficult as there are no diagnostic criteria or tests. Diagnosis is largely based on exclusion and suspicion. A history and physical exam, x-ray or CT scan, and general blood work are completed to help support or disprove the diagnosis. There is no standardized treatment for fat embolism syndrome, therefore treatment involves supportive care of the involved organs. This includes respiratory support ranging from supplemental oxygen to mechanical ventilation, intravenous fluids, inotropes and pressors for cardiovascular support, and an intracranial pressure monitor, external ventricular drain, or a decompressive craniotomy for cerebral edema. Luckily, most individuals have a complete recovery from fat embolism syndrome. There is no prevention of fat embolism syndrome. However, the risk of developing fat embolism syndrome is decreased with early stabilization of lung bone fractures. This wraps up everything you need to know as a nurse about fat embolism syndrome. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please show your support by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And please leave a comment down below if you have any video requests. Thank you and bye!